Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number 63. We think that's the right number anyway. We're not we're not 100%. Can anybody sure. corroborate that? Yeah. Well, we can't count. There it is. 63. <laughs> it's like uh 63 times we've done this and we continue to do it because we got lots of stuff to talk about tonight. I mean, you've got you know some a new mic that's come out and some other cool yeah. stuff and uh so we're going to talk about those and we're also going to talk about rms and we would love your questions so throw them in the chat room if you got a question about your home voiceover studio or a piece of equipment or some piece of nonsense that you picked up on some facebook forum group <laughs> we'll be here to dispel it it's time for tech talk on voiceover body shop right now from the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, Remote Studio Connections for Everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Hey, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech talk, talk, tech, tech talk, talk, tech talk, tech talk, tech talk. <laughs> All righty. Well, we got <coughs> take two. Yeah. No, we're, we're good. I had that placed exactly on the very edge of the table just so that would happen. Thank you. Um, tech talk tonight. I have a bunch of stuff to talk about. Okay, cool. And some show and tell. Oh, can't so, wait. I, we got to do, gotta do more show and tell. That's it's really nice if we have a couple friends in the business who like to hear what we have to say about their stuff one of them is vanguard yep I, so we've got I that have mic like here. three or four vanguard t-shirts you, <laughs> yeah. you show up to nam or, or or one of those things and it's we always come away with a, a t-shirt so they're they're a company that gets that there are certain niches in the in in the pro audio world that aren't right. being well served and one of them is voiceover and yeah. I think, he, I think they get that over there. Yeah, so. they're, they're always asking us about mm -hmm. it. So, yeah. So why do we have a brick wall behind us today? Because sometimes brick walls are actually kind of cool acoustically. They actually are. <laughs> they actually are. I'd rather have a brick wall in my, in my room than a piece of drywall any day of the week. Yeah. Acoustically. It's nice. Yeah. So uh, here it's obviously fake. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now we know Bo Weaver actually has a brick wall in his booth. Yeah. He's got stone and all kinds of cool like surfaces yeah. in there. Yeah. That doesn't mean you need to build a brick wall in your closet, but you know, anyway. <laughs> so if, you, if you're joining us for the first time, which I sort of mm -hmm. doubt, but if you are, George and I are experts on home voiceover studio audio, although we are going to consciously push the name again, because it's going to take hold this time, personal professional studio. Personal professional studio. Because, yeah, Remember that. I, I, I've been hearing from, from, you know, people who are saying, I've talked to my agent or I've talked to so-and-so or this, and they're like, they, they say, if you got a home studio, we don't want to talk to you. It's like, 
well, why? Because your audio is probably better than some studios I've heard here in LA. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it's uh, one of those things that, uh, but there is a science to it and an art, and George and I are artists. Uh, yeah, it is an interesting mix, especially when we figure out how to just improvise with things that you already have. Right. Practical treatment, you know, not, you don't always have to start with a blank slate and wallpaper the place in foam right yeah as i like to say you know use what you got if it works nobody needs to see how the sauce is just made if it yeah. sounds good it is good there we go so uh but if you'd like to work with one of us and learn how to do it properly as opposed to crowdsourcing it on your on facebook or linkedin and saying what's the best microphone for voiceover or what's you know what interface is going to make me a better voice actor? Or what's that noise? Yeah. yeah. What's is that a <laughs> buzz or a hum? Yeah. If you'd like to talk to George about it and learn it properly, where would they go? They'd head over to George the dot tech. That's right. My odd domain name is also the name of the company, George the tech. And uh, you can book services on there uh, through my scheduling system. You can have me do a sound check. Uh, where you send me the audio and I send back notes about what I'm hearing or what needs to be improved. And you can design a studio. Maybe you're moving and you need to let, figure out how am I going to make the new place sound like the old place or at least better than the old place. That's the kind of stuff I do over at George the dot tech. And Dan has his own brand of tech support for you over at voiceoverstudio.com. Yeah. Head on over there. See the services that I offer. Uh, I like to teach people from the ground up. A lot of people learn things incorrectly, or there's a lot of misinformation out there about how to do their home studio. And uh, I set them straight. I make it simple for you. It's like, you need this, 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 and this, and here's how you use it. I think people tend to obsess about getting the right equipment as opposed to how to use their equipment. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know how to use it, a $10,000 microphone is going to set, make you sound really, really, really bad and very, very poor. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's important that you learn how to do it right. And if you've got a technical issue, I can help you with that. But also, I also offer uh, listening to your audio. I've got my specimen collection cup on my home studio, home voiceover studio website to scroll to the bottom of the page click on the specimen collection cup and send me some audio. There's some instructions on how to do it. And uh, I will give you a very thorough analysis of what I'm hearing and what you need to improve. Or do you really need a full consult to teach it back so you can learn it from the ground up, which a lot mm -hmm. of people apparently need to do mm -hmm. a lot more people in voiceover these days than when you and I started doing this and yeah. the pandemic didn't make it any easier. No, we were yeah, busy boys for the last 18 months. So, yeah. uh, but we're, we're happy to help you. And, uh, so do that. So in your tech update this week, which we have missed for the last month or so, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, well, welcome back. It's Thank good you. to have you back. Yeah. Well, I might as well start with the, the fun stuff. Oh, show and tell. Let's do this gracefully. Mm. We have. A new microphone from Vanguard. It's the V4. This is a microphone that we've checked out before. We've both tried before, but this is a new generation. Generation. What have two. they changed? On? What I understand is the good news is they didn't change anything that made the first mic good. So okay. it still has the same features, the same basic design, the same. Um, you know, like the first thing you'll notice compared to the old microphone, the old one had like a maroon uh, burgundy color. Mm -hmm. This, one, this one, and I'm literally unboxing this Ooh. for the first it's time. A, is, it, is it still burgundy or is it more I of would, like a I would dark? call it more of a Merlot, to tell you the truth. Yeah, let's take a look. I mean, I did not even take this out. This is sort of an unboxing. I don't have the old mic here to compare, but it's more like a violet color, I guess you could say. It's very uh, rich and luxuriant looking. Which mic is that? 416? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, this is the way it looks. It got a lot of the same features. 
It has an independent pad switch, which gives you zero, 10, or 20 dB pad. Ooh, that's nice to have here. Yeah, two levels of pad. It has an omni position, a figure eight, and a cardioid. Which one is that? This one here. Ew, we have a we have a scratchy mic cable, um, and it uh, so it's got cardioid figure eight and omni, which the other one did as well. The one thing that's standing out to me differently, other than the way it looks, is very similar. They said they were they were able to improve the noise floor characteristics, so it's slightly quieter than the old one. Well, uh, how much quieter can it be? It was pretty quiet to begin with, but I think they're trying to get it closer to some of those really expensive microphones. I mean, this is like a $400 ballpark microphone. Which is a great price for a really good mic. And especially, it looks the part. I mean, it mm. looks super classy. And sometimes that matters. You know, sometimes to, it's to kinda, some people, yeah. You know, it's kind of nice. The thing that is different mm -hmm. is this pad switch on the back used to be a one side was pad and the other side was a low cut. Mm. Now it's one side is minus 10 dB. And the other side's minus 20. So there is no low cut anymore. Hmm. Now, I'm curious why they took that out. Because for me, that's an important feature. I really like having a low cut switch. Most people have trouble in their home studios getting rid of the rumble. Right. right? All these like super sensitive uh, large diaphragm mics are really sensitive at low rumble frequency. All that low end stuff. And uh, this no longer has the high pass filter, which is... Interesting. I, I have figured out, though, that a lot of mics with high-pass filters, that filter sometimes adds noise. I have noticed that. The CAD had that problem. Yeah. And so my only guess is in their pursuit of perfection and quiet lower noise is they decided it's better that it not have that. And just fix it filter. If you, if you got too yeah. Noise. So I guess that's why they did that. But anyway, this is just a literally an unboxing first time ever. We've looked at the mic and we're going to... We're going to obviously do a more thorough test recording and get to hear it and the whole nine yards. But that's the that's the Vanguard before you're seeing it probably here for, for the first time. This is serial number four. Wow. So there aren't that many of them out there yet. So we're excited to try that. Thanks for sending that. Very to cool. Us. I can't wait to try it myself. Now we don't get to keep it. So, you know, keep that in mind. <laughs> this is a, a real demo where we have to send the mic back. So I'll be I will be brutally honest. Um, I just thought I would mention something about the Powerline Ethernet adapters. Yeah. Dan, have you ever monkeyed around with these things? Uh, sort of. It didn't quite work the way I wanted. Yeah, yeah. So the, uh, the whole concept of the Powerline Ethernet adapter is when you're trying to get away with uh, working with Wi-Fi and you're doing real-time streaming, that could be Source Connect, IBDTL, Zoom even. Anytime where you're trying to send audio real time through your house, through 10 different walls, and et cetera, Wi-Fi is often not going to cut it. So the alternative is Ethernet. And we would always prefer Ethernet. That's always the best way to go. But drilling holes through the walls or unfurling a 100-foot Cat5 cable and rolling it down the hallway is not always going to be spousally approved, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... If you're looking for a workaround, let's figure out where that's coming from. Wait, I know exactly how to fix that. Tell me what Watch that it. is. All right. Go on four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now it should sound fine. One, two, three, four. Yep. One, two, three, Channel four. Channel four sounds great. Okay. That my cable goes away. Um, if you are trying to... Uh, my train of thought got derailed. Sorry about that. Oh, if you're looking for an alternative to all those things we're talking about, cables through the hallways, drilling holes in the walls, right. power line Ethernet adapters create, turn your electrical wiring into Ethernet. Um, so you have a magic box on one end you plug in near your router. Ding. You have another little magic box that you plug in near your computer. And then each of those plugs into the respective device. So one has an Ethernet going to the router. On the other end, you have an Ethernet cable going to the computer. It's it's like voodoo, but essentially it converts your electrical wiring into Ethernet. And it doesn't, it's it's a varying success. Mm. It's not, I, I found sometimes it's slower than the Ethernet. I'm sorry, slower than the Wi-Fi connection. So 
it's like a trade-off. Sometimes you get slower speeds, sometimes faster, but the real advantage of it is you're getting consistency and you're not going to have any Wi-Fi dropouts, interruptions, sudden uh, losses of signal, et cetera, when you're using Powerline Ethernet adapters. So if you got issues, Sue wants to know, what do these damn things cost? <laughs> uh, she gave me the international, hey, we just sing. I don't think she was playing the world's smallest violin. Um, they're not that expensive. I've seen them at the really low end of about $50, $60 for a pair. So you have a transmitter and a receiver. Um, the really nice ones are like six, uh, 80 to $100. I like the, the more expensive ones tend to have faster speeds and they have a pass-through socket. Because you have to plug these into the wall. Most people don't have a spare plug in the wall, like for anything. Yeah. Everything's being used. So the better ones have a separate, uh, uh, literally another plug in the face of it. So you can plug more stuff in, which I re really, really like. But um, get them, try them out. And, and they don't require configuring. You know, there's no IP address BS. You just plug and go. So. Huh. That's those are power line Ethernet adapters, and they might help you in your situation, especially with Source Connect. Um, another little piece of news: Universal Audio Apollo hardware, which you know we love to hate um, and hate to love, but sometimes we just have to use them because that's what has become expected in some studios. Finally, is officially supporting Apple Silicon Max. So um, we've been using them. I've been using one uh, in a couple studios with Silicon Max for a really long time. Like, I don't know, almost since it came out. The Max came out a year ago. But officially, they are now supporting it. So they will troubleshoot it with you and show you how to get it working and deal with the drivers, keep them updated. So that's good news for everybody who's been on the fence. Are they, are they ready to buy and invest into the new Mac technology? Um, Universal Audio is now finally fully supporting it well that should solve a lot of problems because people have been like i bought an apollo and i can't use it with source connect and it's like, yeah know. for various reasons people have been frustrated with compatibility this is going to happen like every time there are new mac series that are released like a, a a real ground up redesign it doesn't happen that often like every 10 to 15 years but when intel's came out that was about 15 years ago when intel mac came out there was a period of time where you just couldn't use those new computers. It was a, it was probably more than a year. Um, the transition to the new computers, the new technology, the Silicon Mac, uh, which are, we are calling the M1 processor, that's been more rapid, and it's thanks to something that's called Rosetta. And that's what allows you to run plugins, older versions of software, and have them run seamlessly on the Silicon Macs. And that works really well. I've had very good luck with it, uh, running all kinds of stuff. Chances are, if you're running Isotope, you're running your software in Rosetta mode. You may not even know it, but Isotope and a lot of plugins are, they've been the slowest to, to uh, what do they call it, recompile or rewrite their software to natively support um, Silicon. You can only guess that it's really time consuming and expensive for them to do that. Right. And that's why there's quite a long delay. Um, but anyway, a lot of stuff you shouldn't be using anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of plugins that everybody buys because they hear from another voice actor friend that this is the thing I'm supposed to be using. And end up usually, I usually end up turning half of it off or just detuning it completely. Right. Um, one or two more things. Oh, another plugin thing. Um, if you're looking for a plugin that works well in multiple platforms, mm -hmm that gives you control over EQ and compression that can also work as a de -esser. There's a great plugin that a few of the engineer type people that I know uh, in the business have been talking about for a while. And I've more recently uh, started to adapt and what that's called TDR Nova. Um, it's, it's a really great plugin that will maybe confound you if you haven't worked with any EQs or compressors before. I wouldn't say it's your Fisher Price compressor, you know, something that's really, really easy to learn. <laughs> Fisher Price, <laughs> you know, like something with just one knob. <laughs> uh, but pull uh, it all on behind you, and... <laughs> exactly. 
that was like we used to say like anything that was like really simple and basic to learn we called it our fisher price version it's a little more advanced than some but it's much easier to operate than say the equalizer or i think in my opinion the compressor in um, audacity for example i always have trouble with those plugins because you can't tweak them while you're listening which to me as an engineer should be a default you gotta like, be able to do it in real time yes if you're going to tune an eq you have to be able to listen to what you're doing you can't do that with audacity with a lot of plugins but this one even in audacity you can preview the audio mm. and fine tune it so now when i set up if someone's using audacity and they need a better sounding audiobook preset for making their audiobook client happy whatever it is i'm now usually going to integrate the tdr nova eq in the macro the good news is bizarrely it's free um wow. they i think they have a pay version which, which is a little more sophisticated um but it is a completely free plugin which is quite amazing um considering how good it is so that's been my tool uh, uh one of my more recent tools of choice i may take to just adopting using that one plugin for most of the different DAWs, just so that you can have this one consistent interface for how you set up an eq or a ds or well, you're only like gonna that. have like you know three variables to work with there as opposed to well i can use this one and put that one here and yeah yeah i know i know jordan reynolds is is doing a, a an audio training program and he's using that plugin because you can teach one plugin and it will translate over all these different uh daws so check out tdr nova if you're looking for some other kind of tool again it will also work as a deesser um, so if you don't have a good DSer to begin with and you really need one, it could be really helpful. Anyway, that's my tech update. And now it looks like we got a little discussion to settle, a yeah. little score to settle. Well, it's not a, it's not a score, score to settle. I mean, no, I, I RMS, rely on you to teach me this stuff. RMS versus peak, blah, blah, blah. blah. Right. Well, I, I had a client this week. Yeah. You know, and I said, well, you've got to, you know, here's, you know, set your levels. You should always be like you know, uh, modulating to minus nine, peak between minus six and minus four, or as I like to use the traffic signal thing, always in the green, always in the yellow, flash in the red. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, and then he wrote back, well, my agent says I have to keep it at minus 18. Keep what at minus 18? Well, I'm figuring, I think that's the RMS because if they, the, they always ask for the RMS. But did they, when, when the client said that, the, I, I, I love getting into these discussions. Oh, yeah, of course. Did they give you any information or did they say, they tell me to keep <laughs> it at minus, minus 18. 18. Is that all they said? That's the thing is no one ever explains it because they don't understand it themselves. They're getting no, this stuff like second telephone. hand and third hand. It's a game of telephone. From, yeah. from, from the engineers. So like, oh, yeah, I just tell them to keep minus 18. Like everybody knows what the heck that means. <laughs> and and, and yeah. people are like, completely thrown off by this now like oh okay i i see it like a minus 18 over here so they try to keep it like, like no so, so so i know enough from audio that minus 18 rms yeah. is pretty loud right 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 that's like the when you're finished mastering an audiobook and it's super loud that's minus 18 so how would you keep your levels at minus 18 how would you do that well I, as you're performing Personally, I think that when they say it's got to be at minus 18, if you send them a good, loud, properly modulated file, yeah. oh, that sounds good. I don't think that they really care. I think there's a lot of, you know, a little it's, you know, it's, te it's, techno it's, rabbit hole yeah. trying to send people down. Buzzword the stuff. Buzzword stuff. Exactly. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and you really, as long as you keep your modulation proper. You know, if an engineer gets that, he's got enough headroom to work with it and it's not too low. So they got to boost it way up. If you keep it consistent within those, those parameters that, you know, that we suggest keep it, you know, modulate to minus nine peak between minus six and minus four, you can go up to three, but you don't want to get too much louder than that. Uh, I know some engineers are saying, yeah, maybe not quite that loud. Uh, <laughs> but as long as it's clean. You know, we, we had Tim Friedlander on last week and he was like, you know, I'm, I'm telling people maybe not quite that loud. Okay. Uh, because, you know, if you, if it's a good clean signal, they can at least boost it up. 
Right. And it's not going to add any noise, and it gives them the room to really do the manipulation that they want to do using all the amazing amounts of plugins that they have and know how to use. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been using silly little mnemonic things, too, to remember, like, for people, like, when it's in the green, you're, you're a little lean. If you're into the yellow, <laughs> let it mellow. If you're up in the red, you're nearly dead. That's been my silly little saying. But, yeah, it's it, at the end of the day, if the, if the playback is clean without distortion, right. with very low noise, whether you peaked at minus 3 or minus 10 even, right. you're going to be okay. Right. And with 24-bit recording now, which has become the standard of all the hardware we have, even the, the cheapest Scarlet interface, um, you are you have a lot of dynamic range now. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it. If they give you a weird spec like that, ask. Like, we don't, we can't just assume they know what they're talking about. And if they don't know what they're talking about, I think you should put them to task and ask them, do you mean minus 18 dB RMS or peak? What, do, what are you talking about? Because there's a very big difference between and those then, two. And then you'll see steam come out of the end of your phone. Going, uh, <laughs> this guy's annoying. <laughs> yeah. Too many questions. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's important that, that you know, when these, these, these terms get tossed out there, Mm. That they at least explain them, but nobody does that. You and I are the only ones that explain this stuff to people. They're like, <sighs> no one ever talked to, to this. No end. I, you know, I went to this yeah. coach. I went to this guy. He says, I've got to use all this compression and I've got to use this and that. And I got to yeah. use that. Got to use is different from here's how you do it. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing with equipment. If you're you know, like, well, this is a great microphone. Oh, I got a great microphone, but you still have to know how to use it properly mm -hmm. and you still have to use it in the proper environment, but yeah. that never gets seem, seems to get discussed. Yeah. So listen to us. We happen to know what we're talking about. And if your agent's confusing <laughs> you, have them reach out, have the agent reach out to us uh, or something. Absolutely. Because there are some agents and producers out there that send out really good info sheets to the talent, right? Cut sheets that say, here's the parameters we're looking for. There are not that many of them. But there are some out there that do that. So that's nice when you have an agent or representation or a client or whatever that gives you clear information. Yeah. That's really refreshing. Yeah. So that's that's a good good suggestion is get people to specify. And if they give you a term that perhaps you don't understand, you know, Google it. <laughs> right. You know, but then again, it's also important to be able to hear the difference between these things as opposed to just reading it on a page. Yeah. You know, I mean, you and I tend to do things by ear. You know, if we walk into a room and we're listening, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit reverberant over here. We mm -hmm. got a node there. We're not doing all these equations that these acoustisticians do, you know, for, for NASA and, and all those other things and for car companies. And, you know, if it sounds good, it is good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I tend to get, you know, units matter. I know it sounds nerdy science, but units matter. Like, oh, it's, oh my gosh, I was outside and it was 47. Uh, <laughs> that's not that cold. No, it was really hot. Oh, you I mean, mean Celsius, Celsius. Yeah. <laughs> units, folks. Like if when you just give a number, if you don't know what the units are, it doesn't mean anything. That's so. right. All righty. Hey, we'd love your questions. Since you clearly understand that we now do know what we're talking about, um, uh, just drop us a line wrong. right now in uh, the chat room in Facebook or on YouTube, depending on where you're watching, and we will be happy to elucidate on an answer that you will understand. So stay tuned for that. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. Don't go away. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching VoiceOver Body Shop. It's great. <music> From voiceoveressentials.com, it's the relationship savior, the multicolor LED VO recording sign. Not just a stock on the air or recording sign, it's our exclusive voiceover recording sign. This brilliantly lit LED 20 color beacon tells everybody at home, which is currently everybody, hey, I'm auditioning, recording, podcasting, narrating, or broadcasting here, and a few moments of relative quiet would be very much appreciated. What's more, the wafer-thin remote control lets you choose a multitude of options, from color to brightness, flashing to fade in and out. You can even set up your own personal codes. Red means I'm recording, 
Blue, playing back. Green, it's a wrap. Plug in the seven-foot-long cord and hang it on a doorknob or wall hook using the included chain. For voice workers, silence really is golden. And gold is one of the 20 colors you can choose from. Order yours now for just $69.95 from voiceoveressentials.com. That's voiceoveressentials.com. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. This is the part of the show where we get to talk about source elements, the creators of Source Connect, and a lot of other tools that allow engineers to work remotely with voice actors, engine, uh, musicians, anybody that wants to collaborate with audio all around the world. And it has really become a mainstream tool, a very mainstream tool in the use, uh, in, in commercial production, uh, production for film, post, et cetera. Why? Because for one thing, they've been doing it a long time, 15 plus years, just in perfecting and improving Source Connect alone. And then the fact that in the studio, the side that you're not in, the one, the one that you're connecting to, it's plugged directly in, integrated into their Pro Tools production workflow. So they love that. They love that your audio goes straight into a track. And actors love it because when the session's over, it's over. You don't have to do any editing. You don't have to do any post. So during that session, your microphone is like on a virtual mic cable that goes from your studio all the way to that studio, halfway across the world, wherever it happens to be. Anyway, get signed up. Go to source-elements.com and get a 15-day free trial just so you can get it up and running and become familiar with it. If you're really feeling overwhelmed, head over to my site. I've got a page on there all about Source Connect with some videos and some help info to help get you up and running. And we can also do a little one-on-one -on -one to get you up to speed a little bit faster. Anyway, thanks, Source Elements. Let's get back to the show and answer some tech questions. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. And we're back here on the Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk. Love to get some more questions from you out there. Uh, just put them in the chat room in Facebook, and uh, we will be happy to answer them. Um, first question up from Gary McFadden from the Twisted Wave Facebook group earlier this week. Mm -hmm. uh, it was recently asserted in a Facebook group aimed at professional voice talent that Twisted Wave is one of the worst programs to use for recording audiobooks for multiple reasons. One being that single wave files get less and less stable the longer they are. Twisted Wave can't handle that. I find that to be complete nonsense. Uh, this was news to me, as you know, I, as Gary apparently, as I work primarily in audiobooks and other long form recording and have Twisted Wave since George Whitta mentioned it in a webinar uh, I produced back in about 2012. I'm wondering. Uh, if a this assertion that dot wave files become more unstable the longer they are is true, and b if it is true, what might be considered a safe length for wave files when using Twisted Wave or any other DAW for that matter? That sounds like a pile of misinformation <laughs> and really somebody does. trying to throw somebody in the wrong direction. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot to unpack in this one. That's why I wanted to put it in. <laughs> Let's, where do we start? And 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 it wasn't like he asked for us to talk about it on the show, but when I saw it come up in the Twisted Wave group, right. Facebook group, I thought this is a great topic. Absolutely. So there's a few things at play here. I think one of them is Twisted Wave 
SoundForge and a lot of other audio editors are what we call destructive, right? So the file you're, when you're recording and editing a WAV file, you're always doing all of those, you're doing all those active, those steps or processes, whether you're cutting, whatever, you're doing right. it to the actual, theoretically, not the actual WAV file, there's a temp file, but you're working on a contiguous WAV file, right? So it's destructive. If you cut out something and save the file and close, the original audio, whatever was removed is gone oh, forever, right. okay? That may be something that's been conflated into saying that uh, uh, recording these long files is more unstable. Beyond that, I think it's just a little bit of techno elitism okay. slash tech, uh, you know, mis mis misinformation. I, I think it's just a little bit of both. Right. You know, it's, I've I've definitely heard folks in the business say that you know you should always use non-destructive uh, recording programs for audiobook production. They say it's the only way to do it. Da 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 da. It's a way to do it. <laughs> it's like it's I, their way to do it. I've been teaching how to record audiobooks in Twisted Wave since before 2012, and Dan's been doing it for years. It it totally does work, and it is very reliable Do, is it less reliable than pro tools which is more crash prone um does uh, pro tools auto recover your session for you after a crash not, not i mean i don't know yeah. if it started doing it recently yeah. twisted wave auto recovers your file when you crash or have a software failure and it does it very reliably yeah. I, I, I have found that whole statement to be the exact opposite of what my experience is because yeah. I mean, I'll use Adobe Audition mm -hmm. primarily as my, my, my main recording software. And when you're in waveform mode, it's a, it's a wave editor. Right. It works like Twisted I've, Wave. I've, re I've recorded hour-long files on that. Sure. You know, yeah. uh, but I, if I do a long format thing that's going to be an hour or so, mm -hmm. I immediately use Twisted Wave. It takes up less resources. It, it doesn't glitch. It's it does what it's supposed to do. So I don't know what this person is saying, but I think you're absolutely right. I think it's a matter of somebody saying, well, I use this and I'm good at what I do. And which is why we tell you don't crowdsource your home studio on Facebook. Yeah, I mean, I mean you, there's, you, you can get good answers there, but you're also going to get some very strong opinions from people who do not want you to succeed. Yeah, that can happen. I mean, also, if you're if you're hanging out in a forum or a group that's all about a specific program, right? There's obviously going to be a lot of bias towards that program, um, whether it be Reaper or right. Studio One. These are some of the becoming more much more popular as of late uh, multi-track DAWs, and there's a lot of folks who believe they are the best tools for recording audiobooks. They are a set of tools for recording audiobooks. And when you know what you're doing, they work brilliantly well. Um, I think they require a lot more steps to get from A to Z. Uh, but it's uh, how you learn it and how you use it. Right. And uh, I don't feel like there's anything to show that one is more stable than the other. I, I read the comments from that. You know, there were somebody said, well, there actually is a wave file file size limit of, in a 16 bit file of two gigabytes or something. Okay, that's fine. Like Twisted Wave, if you reach the end of a file size, it's going to just generate another file. You're going to get a second file. I've never right? had that happen to me. Yeah, it's it's so incredibly rare that that problem comes up, and it's just it's sort of a non-issue. I know we're harping on it, but I wouldn't I would not worry about it if you're out there running Twisted Wave and you heard this and you're having a little hand wringing moment. Relax, yeah, don't worry chill. That. You're going to be fine. Problem. You're going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought this was an interesting comment from Jim McNicholas, who mm. threw this in the chat room. So mm. Sometimes if, if it sounds good, ACX doesn't think it's good. Oh, boy. There's another <laughs> one I could talk for half an hour. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I gave up doing audiobooks about eight, nine years ago. Mm -hmm. One, because I, I felt what ACX and Audible do to audio is sacrilege. I mean, yeah, it's got to be loud enough for, you know, for little old ladies to hear it in their headphones mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, on the subway or something exactly I mean, and i understand that yeah but sometimes i get the idea that they don't actually know what it's supposed to sound like 
Yeah. And, you know, somebody's listening to it and they hear one little thing and they're like, oh, it's not 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 up to our standards. I've people have sent me audio that said it was rejected by ACX. And I'm like, I don't it, you, and you want to think, well, maybe it wasn't uh, because of that. It no, might it have been purely on a mathematical basis. Yeah, uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I think there might be another issue there because yeah. clean as a whistle. Yeah. And, and, and I don't know what their problem is. You know, and, and sometimes I might have gotten on the phone or on email and, you know, and said, who specifically said this? Mm-hmm. But yeah, why, why fight with people about it? You know, yeah. if, if you do it right, you know, one, the, one of the things you can do is say, okay, I'm going to fix it and then resubmit it the same way. And if somebody else reviews it, they're, oh, yeah, this is fine. You know, somebody yeah. was having a bad day. Well, there's also a lot more automation in play now at ah, companies like that yeah so the audio goes into a computer mm. and the computer is analyzing the audio the computer doesn't know what sounds good like our human brains so far are the best things to determine what sounds good absolutely because we're the list the ones listening to it right if you're recording an audiobook for a computer to listen to it would be a whole different discussion <laughs> and someday we, yes. we have to do that <laughs> it's very important to <laughs> Do this and properly. Talk the same <laughs> level all the time, and even cadence, so that the computer can pick up each word so individually. Yeah, <laughs> but talk that's about not, AI. Too. It's that's not what we're topic. we're doing. We're doing performances for humans to consume. So ACX, they have these very specific requirements. It's because they it needs the audio needs to get squished by an algorithm so that the file can be shrunk as small as humanly possible. So it can be more easily transported on devices. And it's kind of old technology. Hopefully there's ACX HD or uh, the next generation of Audible where the fidelity becomes important, you know, because I I do hate that. It's it's really frustrating that what passes muster like on the other because on the other side, as Jim said, what they accept as audio that meets criteria can sound like garbage sometimes. Like we've heard it. yeah, Yeah, just because it actually passes their check doesn't mean it sounds good those they're, they're totally mutually exclusive you know so that's something i'm always grappling with i i set up a lot of mastering presets for people that will meet acx while still sounding good like still it's the best i can I anyway. yeah. yeah like <laughs> still has clarity to it still you know it doesn't sound like a robot reading you know i i try my best i don't always exactly succeed but um you know, th- it's very easy to make ACX standards happen. I, I have methods to do it on every platform, but you still want to start with good audio. Yeah. There's no substitute. If it sounds good, it is good. Yeah. You know, I mean, if, if it's clean at the baseline and they can do anything they want to it, you know, I think some of the problems may come up with people aren't mastering it properly. Yeah. Yeah. It's very easy to make it sound much worse after mastering, oh, especially yeah. if you're trying, even if you're not trying to ACX to have ACX specs, you can still make it sound worse. But when you add in the variable of trying to like meet this D- this RMS ballpark range and a specific peak level and a certain noise floor, I've come up with, you know, workflows to make that way easier um and still and still have good sounding audio just just the other day somebody said i use pro tools and i have a whole chain that i use and i i took her audio and i said yeah it sounds great but it's let me teach you a very specific paint by numbers method to readjust the levels using the maximum limiter so it comes on pro tools and how to analyze that audio and and a workflow pro tools was not designed for this stuff at all. No, it was so, designed for making music. Yeah. So coming up with a wake workflow to, to take a bunch of files that you have and make them all fall into this certain volume range, it there's you have to hack, you have to kind of hack the system. So that's what I've been doing for folks. And and successfully, which is hopefully amazing. hopefully it's working. Yeah. Uh Jay Horace Black, you got this one. Oh, um Jay Jay says I have a lot of power outages mm-hmm. in the last year or so. Damn. Why, why in the last year or so? I wonder what's going on. Um, Pay your bill, Jay. I mean, yeah, I mean. <laughs> we can laugh because he's a good, he's a long time <laughs> listener and, and client. One happened uh, on the day uh, and time that a Source Connect session was originally scheduled, but thankfully they rescheduled, they rescheduled the next day. Do you have any recommendations for home power 
generators. Well, you want to get a backup battery for starters. I mean, you know, something yeah. that will keep your computer going and, and all the other stuff. I've had those and they, they work pretty well. Yeah. The UPS, they call them UPSs, right? right? Un, uninterruptible power supply. I would go that direction first. I'd go that route first and I'd get a larger capacity one. So yeah. they sell really cheap ones at Staples and stuff for $70, $80. Looks like a giant fat power strip, right? But they can't run your equipment for very, very long on battery. They will die within five, 10 minutes. The larger units have more capacity and can run your equipment for longer. The problem is most of them emit an annoying beep <laughs> saying, you're on well, battery, power, beep, yeah. you know. So they're not also can be, they're, they're also probably not ideal. Now you mentioned generators. Generators are also not ideal because they are noisier than hell, right? Yeah, and so, you don't want to run them in your studio because the carbon monoxide thing can no, be a bit of a problem too. No, so you can't really. So, but there are thanks to van life, hashtag van life. Um, it's gotten so popular that there's a ton of companies making portable power banks or power packs. They're essentially just hand, you know, lunchbox or actually larger sized you know maybe about this size wow. sometimes bigger battery packs with lithium batteries and 110 volt plugs that you can charge up and keep on hand oh, um man. yeah they're great for emergencies and they're great for living on the road and again the, va the whole van life thing has made these things explode in popularity yeah i mean you have something like that with a solar panel and Exactly. Yeah, so keep it charged. So what you would do in your home is you would just keep one of these units plugged in all the time. It would just be tucked away somewhere and just it would keep it topped up all the time. Then when you really need it, you could unplug it and plug it in to your system, get it fired up. But that that does not make it uninterrupted. Right. You would still lose power and still have to connect it. So it's not a perfect flawless solution, but it's still I think a lot better than going with a generator. Yeah. Um, there are some very small like Honda generators that are very quiet. Get a hundred foot extension cord, run it out the door, <laughs> put it as far away as possible, plug it in and, uh, and hope for the best. I've yeah. heard of people try that. Yeah. but uh, now, now back in hard. Buffalo, back when I lived in Buffalo, it seems like a hundred years ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we had a big ice storm once mm -hmm. and power was out for three or four days. Oh, it happens here. Oh, uh, yeah. We, we, well, not ice storms, but wind storms. Wind storms, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Week, yeah. A week long power outage. Yeah. Does yeah. that happen? Or an earthquake or something like that. Yeah. These things can happen. Mm -hmm. um, we had, you know, for some reason, we're like, okay, now we want a backup generator. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, we got a backup generator powered by natural gas. Mm -hmm. So it would never run out of gas. That thing, that thing would have been great. Except yeah. that there was never another power failure after we. Of course. <laughs> God, so, not the way. Know, but it would, it, you know, well, there was a couple. I mean, there'd be a mm -hmm. lightning strike and you'd hear, <laughs> you know, on the outside of the house. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden the lights would come back on. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then the light, and then it would shut down. And the lights would come back on because whatever it was that shorted out was, was fixed very quickly. But, uh, but if you have an extended power outage, uh, you know, which, I mean, they have the flex alerts here in California because it's been hot here. Flex hot, alerts, hot, hot. brownouts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, and, and you'll know it because if you have your air conditioning on, suddenly you'll hear the fan, but there's the compressor will, will shut off because it doesn't have enough voltage to run it. You know, it's really a brownout. Uh, so, it, you know, it depends what you want to spend, too. Well, there is that. I <laughs> if mean, you ever want to, yeah. like, find out how much you can spend on this technology... T type into Google whatever you're looking for, uninterruptible power supply, backup battery, and then the words hospital grade. Ooh. Then you'll see how much yeah. it, how much you can spend on these things. If it's hospital grade, it's studio grade yeah. in terms of power. It's going to be clean. The power is going to be what they call a pure sine wave. You know, cheaper inverters, they can make a buzz noise when they kick in. Um, you want something that's like hospital grade, pure sine wave, that uh, you can run for hours on end without having any technical issues. Bill, uh, Bill, uh, Bill Ratner. Mm -hmm. I remember he showed me one time. He had this unit on the wall in the basement. 
and our basement full of marine deep cycle batteries <laughs> because he had lost power once. He's like, mm. I never want this to interrupt right. my business ever again. Right. And he got this set up. Or Tesla Powerwall. Tesla Power Powerwall. I, we want to get one of those. If you got the scratch, that's the ultimate. I mean, I got a 22 kilowatt solar system on top of the house. Yeah. Here. You know, and if you get a Tesla battery, you could basically go off grid because, well, you're even with solar for, power for, num for several days, probably. Yeah. Depending on your air conditioning and right. stuff. Even though they're sort of sucking the, the electricity back out. And mm -hmm. we're, it's just, you know, we're saving money with solar. It, trust me, we, we're, we're doing it. I got to admit, I'm really excited about the Ford F-150 Lightning. Oh, yeah. Do you know about this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It can run your whole house. It has the equivalent of nine, like a nine kilowatt generator. It, it has enough power to run an entire typical suburban home. Wow. From the truck. So you plug it into your house to keep it charged. Right. And it's like a, your, it's like a Tesla power bank in a truck. So as soon as power is lost, the truck is now feeding the house and you're, you're good for several days right off of the truck. Air conditioning, cooking. Air conditioning. Yeah. Unless wow. you need groceries. <laughs> well, yeah, then, <laughs> then you got a dead truck yeah, in the driveway. You a can't... really long extension cord. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> but that's, that's exciting to me. I have to admit, I like I'm, I'm curious about those, those trucks. Yeah. yeah. Might be the first truck I ever owned. I, yeah, you'll never see me driving a truck. <laughs> tried driving a semi once. That was not something I ever want to do again. Anyway, uh, thanks, thanks for your yeah, questions, guys. It. Yeah, you know, there's lots of cool stuff that we could talk about, but we're out of time for this segment. So we'll cut it right here. We're going to take a break <laughs> and we will come back to say goodbye right after these. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Well, hey there, Hero. It's David H. Lawrence, the 17th of VOHeroes.com. And this past week, we opened registration for the brand new updated VO Heroes Pro 2021 program. And we closed registration. No more registration. Everybody's got to wait until next year, except for one group of people. And it may be you. If you went to the registration page and you thought, ooh, I'd love to do this, but I can't come up with all the money at once, okay, we, we've created a payment plan for you. A four-month payment plan. You start right now. You get right into class. You get everything that everybody got that registered during the week, the equipment, the, the courses, the support, the discussion group, the workouts every month, the accountability, everything, just by simply going to voheroes.com slash 4PMT. You go there, the payment plan is yours, and I would love to hold your hand and help you build a successful and satisfying and profitable voiceover career. VOHeroes.com slash 4PMT, and we will see you in class. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, VoiceActorWebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back. I think. Yeah, we, we is think we're on? back. You never know sometimes. <laughs> Streaming is a you know, kind of a, 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 you know, you never know when it's going to work right. I mean, it's been mostly pretty good. Yeah. But it's been that way since we started doing this show 11 years ago. It's been mostly pretty good. Yeah. But that's half the fun. <laughs> and sometimes it's great. Exactly. So. Exactly. Now, you're going to be doing 
webinars. I know because I get to guest star on one of them. Yes, <laughs> thank you for bringing that up. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, October 5th, um, uh, we're going to do an Adobe Audition, sort of more of an advanced webinar. I call mm -hmm. it Pro Tips for Power Users. And like me, that's why I want to have Dan on because he's a daily driver of Adobe Audition for his own voiceover business. So Dan will be there for the second half to do uh, his, give you some of his tips and be there for the Q&A. But if you want to sign up for that, you can just head over to georgethe.tech slash webinars. And that's where the sign up page is to join in on the fun. And uh, it's going to be live streamed. And then if you can't be there for the live, it's going to be a pay-per-view type thing where you can watch it on Vimeo Pro later. So. Outstanding. Join us and uh, we look forward to it. And it's always fun to collaborate or commiserate right. with my partner in crime here, yeah. Dan. I mean, I, I use Adobe Audition every day. Yeah. I mean, it's like turn it on, hit record. It, that, that's what it is. And you've got probably keystrokes that you might use. Uh, like I, I, very simple. Keys. You know, yeah. I, silence, S, mm -hmm. you know, normalize, N, but I mm -hmm. never normalize it. Yeah. yeah, it's it's very simple things because you can edit all the keystrokes in it and really make it the way you want to you, know, you want to use it. It's very customizable. I love that. Yeah, and it's really a much better software for voiceover than say Pro Tools or Logic or one of those guys because it really was designed for doing for voice voiceover. for dialogue. Absolutely. Essentially, no question about it. Yeah, you know, and you can record music on it and you can do all sorts of fun stuff with it. But it is a fully functional excellent tool for doing voiceover and uh you Agreed. Know, so that's mm -hmm. i we highly recommend you you show up for that one anyway uh next week on this very show um uh, i mean you may be watching it like the day before we start the next one <laughs> like saturday or something and i'll throw it up on sunday morning uh we, september 27th september 27th <laughs> that monday uh, Rob Siglum Paglia will be joining us once again, the voiceover lawyer, film producer, floor wax. He's all of those. He's a things. voice actor, director, and attorney, and he knows and producer, his stuff. And he knows his stuff, and he's actually argued stuff in front of the Supreme Court. Holy cow. I don't know if he won or not, but he but actually still, did get the chance to do it. Ice in his veins, this man has. Yeah, he does. He really does. But he knows. <laughs> voiceover legal stuff mm -hmm. inside out and backwards anyway awesome so that is on september he's, he's on the other coast so we probably won't see him in person right? no he'll That'll probably be, be on on uh on over the internet yes yes uh who are our donors of the week mm -hmm. well i'll go first this time let's flip it around okay rob raider uh patty gibbons antland productions michelle blanker christopher epperson sandra manwiller Philip Sapir, Trey Mosley, Shelly Avellino, hey, Thomas Pinto, uh, Greg Thomas, Shauna Pennington Baird, Martha Kahn, Don Griffith, Stephen Chandler, Robert Leadham, Michael Kearns, and Graham Spicer. All right. All supporters of the show. And, you know, some of them or most of them are subscribers because yeah. when they click the donate button, they chose to do it a recurringly, do it record recurringly with PayPal. But you can just do a one-time shot uh, thing. If something was like uh, changed your career or just helped you out, you can make a little little nudge our way. We really appreciate it. It, it helps, you know. It yeah. helps the technical perfection of this show, <laughs> which is why we keep changing the set. And you know, I mean, we were doing it on the couch for a couple of weeks, and then I started sort of slouching. I, this doesn't work for me. This has been working out a little bit better. Yeah, this I, we still I, have some things to sort out and improve. We got some green screen issues. We're going to work that out. <laughs> this back here, you may have noticed, but uh, not, we're not here. Yeah, I no. I, I, if if you have ideas for backdrops that you like, <laughs> let us know. Well, we used send to be, we in. used to have people send in their studios, and we would be in show their us studio. your booths. Show us your booths. Just make sure it's in landscape, landscape. not portrait. Yeah, landscape. Send them to send them to the guys at vobs.tv. We'll start using those again. I think. I think that'll be. I, that was one of my favorite things to do with it, which is why you know. But the pandemic came and we stopped doing it all anyway. All right, we're out of time. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, of course, Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials, Voiceover Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, Voice Actor Websites, and JMC, JMC Demos. Demos. Alrighty. Thanks to uh, Sue Merlino for uh, getting it together again today. There we go. Stop Quick it. on the button. Quick on the button. 
and uh, <laughs> great job. Uh, and uh, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks for your questions. Thanks for your support. You know, when it comes to voiceover, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard, and I'm George Widow, and this is Voiceover Body Shop or VO BS Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Dan, I think it's time for dinner. I think you're right. 